the new champion of Shazam, issue number two. That's right, folks, we're back at it. Miss Mary Blumfield, Mary Marvel, as I'll call her till the end of time because she is a Marvel and we should celebrate her heritage. She's back in her own book, a beautiful, beautiful artistic endeavor from Doc Shaner, and it's just really fun to see this character thrive. I like this book a lot. I'm kind of sad it's only four issues because I could genuinely take a whole series about this. It's beautiful. It's fun. I enjoy it a lot. It's just fun. And that's what we kind of need right now. I think Shazam's in like this weird place where the whole concept is either like we're trying to do too much with it or we're not doing enough with it. So it kind of just comes stale. This is an idea I can get behind a, a character who's essentially a legacy character, though. That's not really a fair depiction of Mary. It's it's just cool. So let's get into it. We open this book. We're getting an advertisement for Fawcett Community College because her foster parents have gone missing. Mary has to come back home and be the legal guardian of all the kids. And all the kids are in different arrays of distress. Pedro's like, what's the point of any of this? I'm angry. If we just had our powers again, things would be normal. This sucks. Everything sucks. I don't want to be a normal kid. This is boring. He walks away. And you see Freddy's just kind of in neglect. He's not really, like, focused on anything. He's doing his own thing. And Darla is eager and excited, but deep down, she's feeling something else. You know that for a fact. Mary's like, how do I do any of this? I have no idea how to be the parent. I have no idea how to keep anybody in check, keep them lined up. She decides, well... The best thing to do is, I guess, stay normal. My parents were last seen around Foster Community College. I'll enroll there and try to do things myself. She didn't see Eugene this morning, but luckily for her, she finds Eugene at the community college, and he's a cool kid. They're like, look at me. I'm a young boy, freshman in high school. They all think I'm a genius. I'm cool here. Is that accurate? <laughs> I mean... I guess it's not inaccurate. It, it is plausible, I suppose, that a bunch of college-level kids would find a 14-year-old to be cool. It's something, I guess. It's kind of fun. And she's like, can you tell me whatever, what's going on with everybody? Like, I've been gone two days. You're suddenly the cool guy on campus, and nobody wants to talk to me. And Eugene's just kind of like, well, everybody kind of is blaming you for essentially being off to college and if they went with you all the way or you you know did things differently maybe our parents would still be here Ooh, what a gut punch but you know yeah, it makes sense but mary's like all right I, I i got i gotta deal with this later i got a stupid rabbit that's still in my backpack too much going on let's stay close to home and be the parent let's go to college to see what's going on she shows up late to class but don't worry the teacher shows up late too and again i i could just sit here and sing the praises of Doc Shaner's art all day. I, I might. I might. I love the look for the teacher. Her name is Dr. G. And she just looks like a community college teacher with the scarf, with the glasses. Just, I know it's kind of stereotypical, like an eccentric teacher to look like that, but it looks great when it's drawn by Doc. It's great. Teacher's cool. The teacher's aide. Or the TA, I guess what they're going by. His name's Chad. Big hunky muscle bound freak. Mary likes a big hunky muscle bound freak. Everything's going great, but there is a crash outside because they are next to the interstate. Get used to car crashes. And so before they can even start class, Mary runs out because there's a car crash. And she's like, there's no way this is just like a normal car crash. With everything going on, it's got to be something else. And it is a big crocodile terrorizing the interstate. So Mary has a cool action sequence where she fights it. Again, there's so much about this book I love. The artwork is spectacular. Everything looks great. I love the lettering work. It's just so clear and fun. And it's, the bubbles just fill the page, but it still like gives art the room to express itself. It's kind of cool. The dragon grows wings. The crocodile grows wings, I should say. They start fighting. Everything's looking bad. She sees like a little monitor kind of like on the inside of it. She's like, I've seen that before. And it starts to cry out for help. She's like, I can probably save it, but the crocodile explodes and these three weird energy beings of this black mist just appear out of nowhere and now she has to fight them but they're kind of kicking her ass a bit and it's not looking good but they're like they're just about to kill her but they decide wait no 
heard acknowledge return in progress. They leave. You're like, whoa, what was that about? Who could that be connected to? Who's to say? But it's kind of fun. We think Hoppy's dead, but he's not. And Hoppy might be the one thing in this book where I'm like, okay, I I get the joke. Will it run stale? Probably. It's just a talking rabbit with all the answers. Cool, I guess. Before Mary can escape, though, the local news picks her up and they're broadcasting everybody. They're like, how does it feel to be a, a female superhero today like, in today's climate? You know, like, come on, what's, what's up with that creature you're fighting? You part of any team? Who are you? Did the world forget about them? I ask. Because I haven't read a Shazam book ever. I mean, that's not true. Of course, I've read a Shazam book, but not modern Shazam stuff where he was like in the Suicide Squad hell to pay shit. Did everybody forget about them? Either way whatever so she just looks like her like you if you've seen like mary marvel before you'd be like that's just her right but i guess she's somebody who you don't recognize now well that's fine that's cute it's cool she flies away because she's like um i do not have the capacity to deal with that right now she finds an alley she can go into and as she's walking down the alley she realizes oh my parents are not the only ones that have been kidnapped recently there have been a bunch of others other parents i'm guessing or just other adults and you're like that is just really freaking fun this book does it better than most man just really creative and cool it's so unique it's it it's that thing where i'm like it's a simple concept what if mary became the champion of shazam what if she wanted to be an adult go to college and just live the experience but she got bogged down by being an adult back at home taking care of her siblings simple concept makes for great drama great ideas very fun and i'll say something that could be controversial but maybe some people will agree with me i know some people might agree with me actually mary is cooler than billy i love billy he's a fun character a great idea i don't think anybody's perfectly executed the idea as of late but mary is just like the toying the line of like a young superhero who is kind of established already that you can experiment and try new things with and I like that. And this is a perfect example of that. You feel the passion behind everybody involved. Josie Campbell, Doc Shaner, and Becca Carey. They're all putting a lot forward in this book. And, and it really shows and makes for something genuinely fun and expressive. And that's all I can ask for in this book. Every single panel is a work of art. Every single piece of dialogue I think works perfectly. I think it's a near perfect book. I will genuinely stand by that. Very cool stuff. So the new champion of Shazam, issue number two, I am going to give a 9 out of 10. Now thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.